Hello and welcome to the latest episode in my Essential DOS Games series. As with any other platform, DOS Gaming offers many great puzzle games. Join me as I take a look at 8 of them that I'd consider essential. Have you ever watched that breakfast scene in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang and thought hey they should make that into a video game? Ok maybe you haven't but that doesn't mean it isn't a good idea. The contraption in this scene is an example of what's known as a Rube Goldberg device a machine designed to perform a simple task, but in an unnecessarily complex fashion. They'll typically include various elements which trigger each other, producing a domino effect. Here's where the incredible machine comes in. The original was designed by Kevin Ryan and published by Sierra in 1993, but for the purposes of this video we'll look at 94's The Incredible Machine 2. It's essentially the exact same game, but adds more puzzles, a wider variety of objects and a bit of polish both in its audio and graphics. The premise is simple, each level has its own contraption, which you have to build or manipulate to achieve a specific goal, which is detailed at the bottom of the screen. Various objects are present on screen at the start of the level, some of which are fixed in place and some that can be moved, and any additional objects to use are on the right hand side. Objects range from tools, rockets, balls and everyday household items to weapons, animals and even people. The physics of all the objects is perfect, so you'll only ever get the outcome corresponding to your placement of the elements, and the levels also have differing levels of gravity and air pressure adding that extra bit of thinking to the solutions. Once all the objects are in place you can run the simulation by clicking the little flag in the top right corner. Puzzles start off reasonably easy and you can envisage the outcome immediately, but it doesn't take long for the incredible machine to ramp that difficulty right up and you'll be using a lot of trial and error to solve the puzzles. There's plenty to keep you busy here with a huge number of levels and there's also a level editor in which you can channel your inner Dick Van Dyke and create your very own balmy contraptions. Perhaps the most surprising factor when playing the incredible machine 2 is the music, which is fantastic. It's not often puzzle games are associated with a great soundtrack, but this is definitely an exception. It's hard for me to describe how good music is in a game without you actually hearing it yourself. The tracks are so varied in style, yet all brilliant in their own way, and this really makes solving the puzzles all that more enjoyable. The variety ensures that you don't get bored hearing the same few tracks over and over, which can be the case with some puzzle games. The fact is that if you're looking for a fun and challenging DOS puzzle game, there really is no better place to start than with The Incredible Machine 2. Atomics was designed by Gunter Kramer and published by Thalion Software in 1990. It has one of the simplest premises of all games on this list, the player must assemble various atoms within a maze in order to create a certain molecule. Each level's molecule is indicated at the bottom left of the screen. You can see here that it starts off with very basic molecules, the first level being water. Arranging the two hydrogen and one oxygen atoms in the correct order will make the water molecule and complete the level. It sounds simple but there are 30 levels in all and some of the later levels are hard as nails. The fact that each level has a set time limit only ups the ante. Atomics is as bare bones as they come, having pretty basic graphics and absolutely no music, it's the Amiga version's music playing in the background, but it does deliver where it counts, with solid puzzler gameplay. Chips Challenge began life as a 1989 Atari Lynx game, but was then ported to home computers. Unusually it was these ports, particularly the DOS version that made it popular. Understandable, considering the Lynx's limited audience. It was developed by Epix and they self-published the DOS version. As is becoming a trend here, the premise is again simple. You take control of computer nerd Chip and navigate him through maze-like 2D levels, collecting enough computer chips to open the door at the level's end. The game does have a plot, albeit largely irrelevant, which involves Chip navigating the mazes to impress a young lady and gain access to some sort of club for computer fanatics. Although the near 150 levels are laid out in roughly the same way, some are more puzzle centric having more complex mazes and pushable blocks, whereas others focus more on avoiding enemies. Although the graphics and sound aren't anything to write home about, and in fact the music can get annoyingly repetitive at times, Chip's Challenge takes a tried and tested 8 bit puzzle formula and builds on it well. Superplex is a Boulder Dash clone designed by two Swiss students published in 1991 by Digital Integration. 
It plays very like Boulder Dash, with which I haven't really had much experience, although it's very similar to Repton on the BBC Micro which I played to death. You control Murphy, a red Pac-Man look-alike, and navigate 111 2D computer themed levels. You need to make your way to the level's exit, which can be easier said than done, as falling bombs and floppy disks will block your way if allowed to fall in the wrong place. These bombs and explosive floppies can also be used to blow up enemies, which are bizarrely either scissors or little clusters of stars which are supposed to be electrons. Murphy has to collect all the atoms in a level before being allowed to exit, and thankfully the levels have no time limit, but nevertheless the game gets really difficult. The music's okay, but extremely repetitive, so you'll be sick of it not long into the game. Superplex took the Boulder Dash format and made it even better, influencing future puzzle games, and it's definitely worth a try. Lemmings is undoubtedly the most highly regarded on this list, and for good reason. It was developed by DMA Design, who later became Rockstar North, and was published by Psygnosis. Originally released for the Amiga in 1991, Lemmings was soon ported to every system under the sun, including an excellent DOS port. In fact, it's one of the all-time most ported games. The lemmings in the game behave as per the myth started by that old Disney documentary, they're suicidal, and the objective is simply get as many lemmings as you can to the level's exit alive. The level begins with a set number of lemmings falling from a trapdoor at a set rate of frequency, although that frequency can be sped up if you're confident that the lemmings can reach the end unhindered. All they'll do is walk in a straight line, so they'll turn around when they walk into an obstacle, but equally they'll hurl themselves right off a cliff, or into a deadly hazard if they encounter one. Your job is to assign particular attributes to certain lemmings, aiding their safe passage to the exit. This may be through building bridges, giving them an umbrella to act as a parachute to prevent fall damage, or blocking their path. There are eight abilities available. Climb, which allows the lemming to scale an obstacle, Float, which is the umbrella I mentioned. Block, which will prevent other lemmings from passing. Explode, which can sacrifice a lemming for the sake of removing an obstacle. Build bridge, and then three for digging, either sideways, down, or diagonally. Each level has a set time limit, although you can pause the game to survey the layout, but can't assign any tasks. There are 160 levels in all, unevenly split into four difficulty levels. Things start off very easy as you'd expect to acclimatise you with the game's mechanics, it then gets trickier, then fiendishly difficult. For such a simple idea it's surprisingly complex, and some serious lateral thinking will be required to solve some of the puzzles. The music's famously excellent, with renditions of classic tunes such as The Can Can, London Bridge is Falling Down, and How Much Is That Doggy In The Window. Perhaps some strange choices there, but they really do fit the cartoony vibe of the game. The lemmings have some cool sound bites too, and you'll hear their squeaky little voices saying Hello. or Hello. Lemmings is one of the most ported games in history for a reason. It's a shining example of a simple puzzle idea done perfectly. Atomino was developed by Blue Byte and published by Psygnosis in 1990. At first glance you may think it's just like Atomics, and even has a similar name, but in reality it's a very different game. I'll admit, at first I couldn't work out what I was supposed to be doing in Atomino. Like Atomics, you have several different atoms to arrange on a board, with the objective again being to create molecules. It was the colours that threw me, I thought the colours were the key to assembling the molecules, but it's actually the number of electrons you need to pay attention to. Each atom has a set number of electrons, so you'll need to link atoms whose electrons will pair off. A molecule is complete when the electrons orbiting all its individual atoms have been paired. At first, the only rules are to create a set number of molecules, and these can be of any size. Atoms can be placed anywhere in the play area, and this is pretty easy. Then you're given more specific parameters in which to solve the puzzles, like using a minimum number of atoms, or working within a limited placement area. The music is top notch with a jaunty but bassy synth vibe, but it could benefit from a bit more variety. Atomino is much more fun than it looks, so don't be surprised if you're sucked in after only a couple of minutes. Although reminiscent of popular games in the genre like Puyo Puyo, Atomino is different enough to be a unique take on the style. Just don't blame me if you get addicted. 
Pipe Mania was developed by the assembly line initially for the Amiga. It was published in 1989 by Empire Interactive in Europe and Lucasfilm Games in North America where it was renamed Pipe Dream. The aim is to assemble a series of pipes of a set length in order to guide green liquid a certain distance. The distance required, aka number of pieces, is indicated in the top right and the available pieces are shown in order at the top left. There's a short timer in the form of a decreasing bar on the right at the level start which informs the player how much time's left until the green ooze will start flowing and once in the pipes the ooze acts as a sort of fuse. The network of pipes must be arranged to the required length before the liquid catches up. With each level the time before the liquid begins to flow is shortened and its rate of flow increases, upping the difficulty. As with all great puzzle games, Pipe Mania took a simple premise and made it extremely fun but challenging. It spawned numerous sequels and even appeared as a minigame in several more modern titles such as the hacking in Bioshock. The last one I'll recommend is The Lost Vikings, which is very different from anything else on the list. It was originally released on the Super Nintendo, developed by Silicon and Synapse, who became Blizzard, and published by Interplay. The DOS version, as with many others, came one year after the original in 1994. The reason it's different to the rest is I'm bending the rules a bit here. I guess that The Lost Vikings is really a platform game with puzzle elements, but I always considered it a puzzle game, so I'm including it. You take control of three Vikings, Eric the Swift, Balog the Fierce and Olaf the Stout. Each has his own special skill and it's the strategic use of these skills that provides the game with its puzzle element. The game starts with the three Vikings heading off on a hunting expedition and this serves as a tutorial. Here you'll discover their abilities. Eric can run fast, jump and can do a running headbutt with his Viking helmet which can demolish certain walls. Balog is the fighter, having a sword for close quarters combat and a bow and arrow. The bow and arrow is dual purpose as it can also be used to hit switches from range. Olaf has a shield which can be used to block or can be held over his head to serve as a makeshift platform on which the other two can stand or used as a parachute. After this quick tutorial the Vikings head home. Cut to that night and there's a cutscene introducing you to the plot. The Vikings are abducted by aliens with the intent of displaying them in an intergalactic zoo. The first level sees them escape the alien ship through a portal that they hope will take them home, but instead it transports them back in time, thus beginning their adventure through time as they endeavour to get back home. This journey consists of 37 levels across 6 different time periods, including prehistoric times and ancient Egypt. Eventually they end up back on the alien ship, before facing off against the alien emperor behind the kidnapping. The aim of each level is simply to get all three vikings to the exit. Each level has an exit in a set place, with the final level in each world being another portal to the next. Levels are laid out as you'd expect from a platformer, but as I mentioned you'll need to use a combination of each viking's skills to get them all to the end. You can switch between the three at any time, so it's often necessary to work out which order and when to use a certain character. They can each carry several items, including keys needed to open doors, food to restore health, and bombs. Each has three hit points, one of which is lost if the viking is hit by an enemy or suffers fall damage. The main emphasis is on traps and puzzles, so although there are enemies present in the levels, they're not as commonplace as you'd expect from a platform game. Rather than having numerous enemies every couple of seconds like Sonic or Mario, the enemies in the Lost Vikings essentially act as another obstacle to overcome, just like any other trap or hazard. The Lost Vikings provides a decent but fair challenge, so it might take you several attempts to complete some of the levels, but not to the extent that you'll be pulling your hair out. The DOS version looks gorgeous and is just as vibrant as the Super Nintendo original. The game has a pleasingly whimsical tone throughout, from the jaunty music to the banter the three Vikings share at a level's end. I definitely recommend The Lost Vikings to anyone, but especially if you're a fan of puzzle games and are looking for something a bit different. As I said, this could merely be considered a platformer, but I'd say a better description would be a puzzler with a platforming twist.
So that was 8 essential DOS puzzle games. I'll leave links in the description to sites where you can play some of them and let me know in the comments which are your favourite DOS puzzlers. And as always, thanks for watching.